quarterback Tua Tungavailoa's status for the Thursday night game against Baltimore remains a mystery. To borrow the expression, it's deja vu all over again with the Miami Dolphins quarterback situation. One days ahead of the Thursday night game against the Baltimore Ravens, there's no definitive answer as to who will start at quarterback and it looks like it will be a game-time decision just like it was Sunday for the game against the Houston Texans. Head coach Brian Flores said Tuesday that Tungavailoa continues to make progress in the aftermath of sustaining a broken middle finger on his left, throwing hand in the Week 8 loss at Buffalo and that at the very least he'll serve as the backup again if he has to miss a second consecutive start. He's definitely making progress, Flores said. Look, he's got a fracture in the finger and there's definitely discomfort. It's getting better. The swelling is down. It's getting better and progress from last week but there's still some limitations for sure. For those looking for clues, there might have been two coming on Tuesday. The first was Flores saying that if the game were scheduled for Tuesday night, Jacoby Brissett would have gotten a second consecutive start. The second, possibly related to the first, was that it was Brissett and not Tungavailoa who conducted the weekly starting quarterback media session at the Baptist Health Training Complex. Tungavailoa was listed as questionable for a second consecutive day on the team's injury report, but the Dolphins again conducted a walk-through and the participation report was an estimation. Again, this mirrors what happened last week when the decision was made in the morning that Tungavailoa wouldn't be starting. I think there's a lot of things that go into that decision, Flores said. Obviously, the health of the player number one and whether or not Tua, in this instance, no different than last week, can do all the things we need him to do to have success in the game. Again, then there's the short week and knowing there's discomfort. There's a lot that goes into it. We'll always do what we feel is best for the team. It's a medical decision. It's a team decision. Obviously I have a lot of say in that. I always try to keep the team first. The health of the player obviously is at the forefront but also want to put the team in the best position. For his part, Brissett said he always prepares the same on game day regardless of his status, so he'd be fine if he were told at 6 p.m. on game night that he would be starting. This is an important time for Tunga Vailoa, who likely needs a strong finish to the 2021 season to convince the Dolphins they're set at quarterback and don't need to try to make a move at the position next offseason. To that end, Flores was asked Tuesday at what point he needed to factor durability in any player evaluation. Obviously availability is very important, Flores said. There are a lot of factors that play into that. You mentioned it, some of them are fluky. That's not the only factor. It's the person, the player, the talent. I think Tua is competitive. He's smart. He wants to be out there. I think he's getting better. I think we all know that in order to continue to get better, you've got to be out there and get the experience. I think he'll get that. I think this is another bump in the road for him. He'll get through it and he'll be fine. Whether he'll be fine quickly enough to start against the Ravens remains a mystery. And it sure looks like it'll stay that way, just like last week, until game day. Amidst one of the most underwhelming Miami Dolphins seasons in recent memory, we take a look at three reasons for optimism going forward. Optimism is a hard feeling to come by lately for the Miami Dolphins and their fans. What was supposed to be a breakout 2021 season laden with expectations was essentially over before it ever really got started. After pulling out a close victory in Week 1, the team spiraled to seven straight losses. The wheels fell off completely, and a team that seemed to have one of the brightest futures of anyone in the league is now looking more like a train wreck than anything else. Fans who have been supporting the team for the better part of the last three decades have claimed that this is the most difficult year that they've ever endured, mostly due to the lofty expectations that the Dolphins fell so far short of. For every answer that we thought we were going to get this season, we got three more questions. It may seem like the sky is falling in Miami. We have been through tough years before, including a 1-15 year and just two winning seasons between 2006 and 2019, but this one feels even more disappointing. It appeared like we finally had things figured out, but in truth, we are just as far away as we have ever been. Alas, optimism is not something that many Dolphins fans may be feeling this year. In fact, Apathy may an even more prevalent feeling as of recent. But if you look really closely, like if you squint, there are reasons to feel promise for the future of the team. Some of the reasons that we felt good about the 2021 season may carry over into 2022, and there will be some new things to be excited about as well. Here are three things that we can feel optimistic about as the Miami Dolphins move forward. Reason number one, rookie class of 2021. Liam Eikenberg has looked like yet another failed offensive line project, 
but many of the other rookies on the Miami Dolphins roster are giving fans hope and optimism for the future. The Dolphins' offense has been stagnant due to a multitude of reasons, but sixth overall pick Jalen Waddell has managed to put up solid numbers despite. His 56 catches is sixth best in the entire league, and has more yards than the likes of Adam Thielen, DeAndre Hopkins, and Cole Beasley. If the Dolphins are able to open up the offense in the second half of the season, then Waddle could be one of the top 20 wideouts in the league in his rookie year. On the defensive side of the ball, two top 35 picks are beginning to showcase their skill sets and have made big plays over the last few weeks. Safety Javon Holland has been highly touted and has the potential to become one of the better secondary players in the league someday, and has showed glimpses of just that. He has made big plays in coverage, including pass deflections and interceptions, and has shown his hitting ability with forced fumbles and hits on the quarterback. Fellow rookie defender Jalen Phillips is also showing glimpses of his potential. The freakishly athletic edge rusher has been progressing visibly, becoming more of a regular fixture in the opposing team's backfield. And the coaches seem as though they are starting to trust him more. Phillips played over 75% of the defensive snaps in four of the last five contests, after being below 60% for each of the first four games of the season. Reason number two, plenty of cap space. There is good and bad news when it comes to the financial future of the Miami Dolphins. The good news is that the Dolphins will likely start the upcoming offseason with the most cap space in the league. They will have a few ugly contracts coming off of the books, including those of Will Fuller v. Albert Wilson and Jacoby Brissett. As of now, Miami should have upwards of $75 million in free money, though they will have to make some tough decisions on guys like Durham Smythe and Alandon Roberts. The bad news is that the Dolphins and their front office will have to make the correct decisions in free agency in order for the cap space to make any kind of difference on the field. With the future of the current regime being in limbo, we're not even sure who will be doing the decision-making, and there are big ones to be made. The expiring contract of Mike Jasicki will be a big talking point through the rest of this season and beyond, and Miami would be wise to extend a player that has been one of the few bright spots this season. Speaking of bright spots, Emmanuel Ogba's contract will also be expiring after the current campaign. He could arguably be just as important to the future success of the Dolphins as Jasicki is, and deserves a payday, whether it comes in Miami or not. Reason number three, potential draft capital. Much has been made about the Miami Dolphins' decisions regarding their impending draft picks. In a series of transactions that took place prior to the 2021 draft, Miami dealt away their own 2022 first-round pick, but wound up acquiring the San Francisco 49ers' first-rounder for the same draft. At the time, it seemed like a medium-risk, potentially high-reward decision that reunited Tua Tungavailoa with college teammate Jalen Waddell. But after seeing the shortcomings that have plagued the Dolphins both on the offensive line and in the win column, the trade has begun to look like yet another draft-related mistake by Chris Greer and Miami's front office. Had they stayed put in the 2021 draft and avoided the trades altogether, they would have been able to select Penny Sewell to help bolster what has been an atrocious front five for the Dolphins. Or they would have had a shot at Jamar Chase, who has proven to be a great pickup for the Bengals. Sure. Miami is going to be giving the Eagles a pretty solid pick in the upcoming draft, but the situation may not be as bad as it looked early on. The 49ers have stumbled upon their own issues that seem far from being resolved, and are just one game better in the standings than the Dolphins at the time of writing. Miami should have some added confidence having finally picked up an elusive victory, and have a somewhat favorable schedule over the next five or so weeks. There is even an outside chance that the San Francisco's pick will be higher than the one that the Dolphins traded away. While it would be nice to be able to control their own destiny, watching the 49ers fall apart from a distance is giving a silver lining to a trade that was looking far worse not too long ago.